of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I bid you a warm welcome to this time of worship. Tonight, we will participate in a service of tenebrae. Tenebrae also means shadows or darkness. And it is a unique opportunity for us to really meditate on, to contemplate the passion of Jesus Christ. All of our readings tonight are taken from the Gospel of Luke. Um, we will start with um, chapter 22, verse 47, and work our way through chapter 23, verse 56. As each individual section of readings is completed, a candle is extinguished. And at the end of the service, we conclude with silence. I encourage you to keep praying, to keep vigil, to keep watch until that morning on Easter when we discover the empty tomb and we shout our joyful hallelujahs. But tonight, we remember that God is light in whom there is no darkness at all that Jesus Christ is the light of the world, and this then is the judgment, that the light has come into the world, and we love darkness rather than light. Will you pray with me? Almighty God, graciously behold this, your family, 
for whom our Lord Jesus was willing to be betrayed into the hands of sinners and to suffer death upon the cross, who now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. While Jesus was still speaking, a crowd appeared, and the one called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading them. He approached Jesus to kiss him. Jesus said to him, Judas, would you betray the human one with a kiss? When those around him recognized what was about to happen, they said, Lord, should we fight with our swords? One of them struck the high priest's servant, cutting off his right ear. Jesus responded, stop, no more of this. He touched the slave's ear and healed him. Then Jesus said to the chief priests, the officer of the temple guard, and the elders who had come to get him, have you come with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a thief? Day after day, I was with you in the temple, but you didn't arrest me, but this is your time when darkness rules. After they arrested Jesus, they led him away and brought him to the high priest's house. Peter followed from a distance. When they lit a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat among them. Then a servant woman saw him sitting in the firelight. She stared at him and said, This man was with him too. But Peter denied it, saying, Woman, I don't know him. A little while later, someone else saw him and said, You, you are one of them too. But Peter said, Man, I am not. An hour or so later, someone else insisted, this man must have been with him because he is a Galilean too. Peter responded, man, I don't know what you are talking about. At that very moment, while he was still speaking, a rooster crowed. The Lord turned and looked straight at Peter and Peter remembered the Lord's words. Before a rooster crows today, you will deny me three times. And Peter went out and cried uncontrollably. The men who were holding Jesus in custody taunted him while they beat him. They blindfolded him and asked him repeatedly, prophesy, 
Who hit you? Insulting him, they said many other horrible things against him. As morning came, the elders of the people, both chief priests and legal experts, came together, and Jesus was brought before their council. They said, If you are the Christ, tell us. He answered, If I tell you, you won't believe me. And if I ask you a question, you won't answer. But from now on, the human one will be seated on the right side of the power of God. They all said, are you God's son then? He replied, You say that I am. Then they said, Why do we need further testimony? We've heard it from his own lips. The whole assembly got up and led Jesus to Pilate and began to accuse him. They said, We have found this man misleading our people, opposing the payment of taxes to Caesar and claiming that he is the Christ, a king. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus replied, That's what you say. Then Pilate said to the chief priests in the crowds, I find no legal basis for action against this man. But they objected strenuously, saying, He agitates the people with his teaching throughout Judea, starting from Galilee all the way here. Hearing this, Pilate asked if the man was a Galilean. When he learned that Jesus was from Herod's district, Pilate sent him to Herod, who was also in Jerusalem at that time. Herod was very glad to see Jesus, for he had heard about Jesus and had wanted to see him for quite some time. He was hoping to see Jesus perform some sign. Herod questioned Jesus at length. But Jesus did not respond to him. The chief priests and the legal experts were there, fiercely accusing Jesus. Herod and his soldiers treated Jesus with contempt. Herod mocked him by dressing Jesus in elegant clothes and sent him back to Pilate. 
Pilate and Herod became friends with each other that day. Before this, they had been enemies. Then Pilate called together the chief priests, the rulers, and the people. He said to them, You brought this man before me as one who was misleading the people. I have questioned him in your presence and found nothing in this man's conduct that provides a legal basis for the charges you have brought against him. Neither did Herod, because Herod returned him to us. He's done nothing that deserves death. Therefore, I'll have him whipped and then let him go. But with one voice they shouted, Away with this man! Release Barabbas to us! Barabbas had been thrown in prison because a riot that had occurred in the city and for murder. Pilate addressed them again because he wanted to release Jesus. They kept shouting out, Crucify him! Crucify him! For the third time, Pilate said to them, Why? What wrong has he done? I found no legal basis for the death penalty in this case. Therefore, I will have him whipped, then let him go. But they were adamant, shouting their demand that Jesus be crucified. Their voices won out. Pilate, issued his decision to grant their request. He released the one they asked for, who had been thrown into prison because of a riot and murder, but he handed Jesus over to their will. As they led Jesus away, they grabbed Simon, a man from Cyrene, who was coming in from the countryside. They put the cross on his back and made him carry it behind Jesus. A huge crowd of people followed Jesus, including women who were mourning and wailing for him. Jesus turned to the women and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not cry for me. Rather, Cry for yourselves and for your children. The time will come when they will say, Happy are those who are unable to become pregnant, the wombs that never gave birth and the breasts that never nursed a child. Then they will say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, Cover us. If they do these things when the tree is green, what will happen when it is dry?
They also led two other criminals to be executed with Jesus. When they arrived at the place called the Skull, they crucified him along with the criminals, one on his right and the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. They drew lots as a way of dividing up his clothing. The people were standing around watching, but the leaders sneered at him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself if he really is the Christ sent from God, the Chosen One. The soldiers also mocked him. They came up to him, offering him sour wine and saying, If you really are the king of the Jews, save yourself. Above his head was a notice of the formal charge against him. It read, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals hanging next to Jesus insulted him. Aren't you the Christ? Save yourself and us. Responding, the other criminal spoke harshly to him. Don't you fear God, seeing that you've also been sentenced to die? We are rightly condemned, for we are receiving the appropriate sentence for what we did. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus replied, I assure you, today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about noon, and darkness covered the whole earth until about three o'clock, while the sun stopped shining. Then the curtain in the sanctuary tore down the middle. Crying out in a loud voice, Jesus said, Father, into your hands I entrust my life. After he said this, he breathed for the last time. When the centurion saw what happened, he praised God, saying, It's really true. This man was righteous. All the crowds who had come together to see this event returned to their homes, beating their chests after seeing what had happened. And everyone who knew him, including the women who had followed him all the way from Galilee, stood at a distance, observing all these things. Now there was a man named Joseph, who was a member of the council. He was a good and righteous man. 
He hadn't agreed with the plan and actions of the council. He was from the Jewish city of Arimathea and eagerly anticipated God's kingdom. This man went to Pilate and asked for Jesus' body. Taking it down, he wrapped it in a linen cloth and laid it in a tomb carved out of the rock in which no one had ever been buried. It was the preparation day for the Sabbath, and the Sabbath was quickly approaching. The women who had come with Jesus from Galilee followed Joseph. They saw the tomb and how Jesus' body was laid in it. Then they went away and prepared fragrant spices and perfumed oils. They rested on the Sabbath in keeping with the commandment. Go in peace. May Jesus Christ, who for our sake became obedient unto death, even death on a cross, keep you and strengthen you this night and forever. Amen.